Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode 26 of the Tigers Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Schulte. This episode recorded on Tuesday, September 6th, 2022. A bit late, uh, but then again, last night was a bit late. So we're going to leave it at that and um, have a podcast. Um, quick injury updates. Uh, Joey Wentz will be joining the Tigers rotation starting on Friday. Austin Meadows has been transferred from the 10-day injured list to the 60-day injured list. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Miguel Cabrera was placed on the 10-day injured list retroactive to uh, September 3rd uh, with a biceps injury. So um, we'll see how that goes for him because... Um, the last week of the season is pretty much this week, so he's going to have to do, I don't know how he's going to do as far as a rehab goes, last week of the minor league season, that is. So we'll see where that goes and what, what part, what, um, what ends up happening with that. Um, it is unknown, uh, what's going to, where he's going to go, if there's going to be any rehab in all honesty, it's a very distinct possibility that we don't see him for the rest of the season. But you really never know. The team is fifty-one and eighty-four, and um, you know we'll 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 delve into that as well because it needs to be delved into. Uh, more importantly, um, Austin Meadows re- uh, was placed on the sixty-day dis- uh, injured list, and what this means is that he won't return this season. Um, Austin revealed on Friday that he has some mental health issues that he's been going through because of the injuries that he's been dealing with. And this is a big deal. This is a big deal. This is an important um, situation. And a lot of people will sit here and say, oh, well, he's a, he's an athlete. He's making good money. He doesn't need to worry about it. Blah, 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 blah. When you can't work, when you can't do what you choose to do for your occupation in life because of physical limitations that you'd never dealt with before it takes a toll on you mentally it takes a toll on you emotionally and a lot of people don't know what athletes deal with and where athletes mindsets are Especially when you've got a situation like Austin has, where you, I mean, you get the news the day before, um, well, two days before uh, the opening the opening of the season that you've been traded, and you're going to the same organization that your little brother is playing in, and your little brother is, is now in double A, so... You know, he's only two levels below you. Um, and it's exciting and you're you're contributing in the best way that you can at the time. And then you get hurt. And your first injury is physical. You can deal with it. You end up getting some vertigo from 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 you know, and 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 you go through that, and you you struggle with that, and you beat that, and then you get COVID, and you struggle with that, and you beat that, and then while you're trying to rehab from your COVID nineteen situation, you get hurt. Your, your Achilles, you get tendonitis in your Achilles, in both Achilles tendons, not just one, but both. So now you go from a situation where you couldn't get out of bed because of vertigo. You, you've, you've beaten that. Then you can't get out of bed because of COVID and you've beaten that. And now you can barely even walk, let alone play baseball because of your Achilles strains, because of your Achilles tendon issues. So now not only are you not able to do what you've chosen to do for an occupation, but these three injuries have basically kept you off of your feet for six months almost. And and it has to be physically 
it's one thing, but emotionally and, and mentally, it has to be so debilitating. Okay, now he's running and doing agility drills, and he's dealing with, with you know, he's actually able to start, he's actually able to move and, and, and engage in baseball activities. But the lingering effects of that have to be just absolutely and completely just debilitating isn't even a strong enough word crushing is 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 more like it and it's more what i'm thinking and so kudos to him for coming out and saying look i need to deal with this i need to get my mind right i need to get my head right not just in a baseball sense but in a life sense and and doing what he needs to do because he's got a family he's got a wife i know he, i don't know if he's got kids or not but i know he's got a wife and of course, he's got a younger brother and 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 whatnot. But man, for him to have to go through that, it it, it it's really a it's really a it's really a big deal. And for him to admit to what he's going through is really a big deal. So kudos to him. Nothing but support from this group of the from from this fan here, and um, we wish him all the best. And uh, hopefully we'll see him on the field next season, and um, he'll be get he'll get back to the player that we know he can be um, from a, from a from an athletic standpoint, and he'll get back to the person that he wants to be from an emotional and mental standpoint. Now, I was asked over the weekend how a Mike Matheny managed team can beat the Detroit Tigers. Not only beat them, but completely dominate them in two games. And uh, so thanks to my good buddy Chuck, we have podcast material for this week. And basically what I said to Chuck is what I'm going to say here in the podcast. And I'll elaborate a little bit. The Detroit Tigers are 30th in Major League Baseball. In home runs. Not 15th in the American League. Not 29th in the majors. They are dead last. The Detroit Tigers are in a season where they're not even going to hit 100 home runs. The Detroit Tigers are in the bottom five in drawing walks. They're in the top five in strikeouts. Not in least strikeouts, most strikeouts. They are one of the top five teams when it comes to striking out. They're number thirty in the league in homers. They're in. They've. They've. They're. 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 They've. They've taken some of the fewest walks in the league. They've struck out probably the most in the league. I don't have the stats in front of me, and I don't, I don't, I, I haven't seen the numbers, and I kind of don't want to because I'm afraid of it. They're 29th in the league in batting average. Their team batting average as of yesterday was 229. They're only ahead of the LA Angels, who are batting 226 as of yesterday. That might have changed after the LA Angels beat the Tigers 10 0 last night. That might have reversed itself. But at the end of the day, the reason why the Kansas City Royals have taken eight of 13 games from the Tigers this year, they've got six more to go, three in Kansas City and three in Detroit. is because whereas the Kansas City Royals tend to their pitching tends to walk a lot of batters and give up a lot of home runs. Detroit doesn't take a lot of walks and doesn't hit a lot of home runs. So Kansas City matches up, or Detroit matches up very poorly against Kansas City. Kansas City loves playing the Tigers because they know that they can strike them out. They can get them out. They know that any pitch out of the strike zone, Javier Baez is going to swing at. You could throw it to second base and he'd swing at it. 
they know that that there's really nobody on this team that walks more than they strike out and has has enough patience to to make them throw a strike and then when they do throw a strike hit it and they know that this tigers team can't hit a fastball it's been proven their 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 batting average on fastballs is abysmal So, this is, this is why the Tigers are 51 and 84. And we wonder with 27 games left, can Detroit win? At least 11 games out of the next 27. Let's look at the schedule, shall we? They got two more in Anaheim. Then they got three in Kansas City. Then they come home for three against Houston. All right, let's look at this. Um, they'll probably lose two out of three to Kansas City. They'll probably lose two out of three to the to the Angels. There's four losses. They'll get swept by the Astros. That's seven losses. Yes, I said it. They'll get swept by the Astros. You want to know how I know that? Because they got swept by the Mariners, and the Mariners aren't as good of a team as the Astros are. Then they've got three more against Kansas City. That's probably two out of three losses there. So there's, let's see, we're up to nine. They've still got six games with the White Sox. They'll probably lose four out of six of those. Now we're up to 13 losses. You've still got three against the Twins. You'll probably lose two out of three to them. Now we're up to 16 losses. And then you've got four against Seattle, including a, a, a day-night doubleheader at the end of the season. This team is going to finish 61 and 101. You're looking at another 100-loss team when the team was a 77 was a 77 win team last year their second losing season under AJ Hinch their fifth straight losing season three of which were 100 lost seasons sorry two of which were 100 lost seasons Here's what the general manager who's coming in needs to work with. Needs to work on. He needs to get guys in there that can hit a fastball. He needs to get guys in there that can walk and that walk more than they strike out. And he needs to get guys in there that have what Dan Dickerson likes to call bat to ball skills. And a lot of other people call it bat to ball skills as well. Make contact, draw walks, don't strike out. And hit the fastball. Now, how that's going to work, I don't know. Because Jonathan Scope has a player option for next year. Jonathan Scope, by the way, will be back with the Tigers uh, probably this week. He is... um, he finished his rehab assignment in single A, high A, West Michigan, um, and will probably DH in a de- uh, doubleheader tonight and then rejoin the team in Kansas City is what A.J. Hinch is thinking. He'll DH in the first game and play second base in the second, or vice versa. He's going to DH one game, play second base in the other. Okay, so... Now you're in a situation where you've got Jonathan Scope, who has, when he's on, can hit a fastball, but he does strike out a lot, doesn't walk much. You've got Javi Baez, whose player options kick in in 2024. So you're stuck with those two guys. What's Spencer Torkelson going to do for you? Is Jamer Candelario the answer at third base? Is Willie Castro's 246 batting average 
a sign of him trending upwards and getting better? Or is that where he's going to plateau? You know, who do you get rid of? You can't get rid of Miguel Cabrera because you've got a, you're on the hook for $29 million for him next year. You can't DFA Miguel Cabrera. He's a Hall of Famer. Detroit did, by the way, DFA Michael Pineda to make room for Joey Wentz. So, you're in a situation where, from an offensive standpoint, who do you get rid of and how do you get rid of those guys? Do you trade them? What can you get back in a trade for, oh, I don't know, Victor Reyes? What can you get back in a trade for... I don't know. Cody Clemens. Eric Haas. Do you re-sign Tucker Barnhart? If you do re-sign Tucker Barnhart, do you say, look, dude, you didn't do very well as a switch hitter. Let's just stick to, to, to batting from one side of the plate, eh? Now, Jamer Candelario is easy because you don't necessarily have to tender him an offer next year. He, he, he's, I believe he's one of the non-tender candidates. So you can just say, you know what, we're not going to tender you an offer. You can, you can, you can, you can, you're, you're done. Go find someplace else to play. You're certainly not going to give up on Spencer Torkelson because he's their number one draft pick in 2020, like one overall. So you're not going to give up on him. Riley Green has shown, has, has been solid. But see, here's the thing. Riley Green was drafted in the same year that Bobby Witt Jr. was drafted in. Bobby Witt Jr. is a high school player. Bobby Witt Jr. did not go to any, col any college. Spencer Torkelson was drafted in 2020, but he had three years of college experience. Bobby Witt Jr. is a better player right now, a better major leaguer, a better hitter than Spencer Torkelson. Yes, he chases out of the zone, but dude's 20 years old. 21 years old. Spencer Torkelson came up with this supposedly amazing power. And we've seen it. He hit a 432-foot homer in Kansas City. And this amazing plate discipline. And he does tend to walk more than he strikes out. The problem is... We haven't seen the consistency... We haven't seen the bat-to-ball skills that, that, that he supposedly has come to the forefront. There are times where he will look completely silly on a fastball that's belt high down the middle of the plate. A ball that he should absolutely just punish. And he'll either take it or he'll swing and miss at it. I like what A.J. Hinch said about him when, when he came back up. He said, we are looking to see, first and foremost, how much hard contact he, he gets, he makes. Because that means that he's seeing the ball well. That means that his swing is where he wants it to be, and he's able to put that, those tools to use. So we'll see because Detroit's got Baltimore, Chicago, Kansas City. Well, sorry, Baltimore, Chicago, Seattle, and uh, and Houston, and Minnesota. Five teams that are in that are that are fighting for playoff spots. So he's going to get good pitching. Congratulations, by the way, to Ryan Kreidler got the call on Thursday uh, to come up from the minors and has. Got his first two major league hits on Saturday. 
He's a guy that I'm intrigued by because he does tend to walk quite a bit. He or he has cut down his strikeout rate. Um, he cut it down actually from 30 to 24 percent when he went from Double A AA to Triple A last year. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about this year's stats because he spent most of the year on the injured list with a broken hand. Um, but he's a guy that I'll be interested to see how he does. So with that, we're going to put a bow on this and we will catch up with you guys next week. My thanks to Anchor for distributing the podcast. Check us out on our YouTube channel if you can. If you want to get in touch with the show at Podcast Tigers on Twitter, or you can email us, TigersBaseballPodcast at gmail.com. It's the longest email address in the world, and I'm proud of that. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next week. Till then, I'm Chris Schulte. Go Tigers. <laughs>